Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name's Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script a help command on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. Um, so all we have to do is go into the game, uh, and what this script is going to let us do is all of the players in our game will have the option to run a help command, and whenever they do, it's going to notify all of the staff members in our game that the player needs help, um, and then they'll have the option to teleport to that player. So let's just pretend we're a player right now enjoying the game. Uh, if we type explanation point help, it'll notify all the staff members that we need help, and then if the staff member clicks teleport, it'll teleport them to the player. Okay, so now that you know what the script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing we're going to do to start out, we want to create a new script under server script service. Um, and I'm just going to name this script help commands, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and this is going to be the script that actually gets when players run the help command. So the first thing I want to do in here is I want to set up our group ID. So this is where it's going to pull the staff members from. So I'll say local group ID equals, uh, and I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you'd want to put your group ID here. Uh, and then I also want to define a variable for the lowest staff rank. Um, so I'll just say local lowest staff rank. And I'm going to set that equal to 254, which is admin for my group, but you want to set this to the lowest rank ID for your group um, that players have access to staff powers. After this, what I want to do is I want to get whenever a player joins the game, um, because the only way we can get when a player chats or when they run a command is by first getting once they join the game. So all I'm going to do is hook into the player added event of game.players. So I'll just say game.players.player added, and we'll connect that to a function. I'm um, an inside of here, I want to be able to get the player that joined, so we'll just create a player variable in there. Um, and now what I want to do, I want to get whenever the player actually sends a message in chat. So we'll just say player, and then we're going to hook into the chatted event of player, and we'll connect that to a function as well. Um, and in here, I just want to grab the message um, because we don't know what they said. They could have said hello to their friend. Uh, they could have said that they're having a great time playing the game, or they could have ran a command. So we need to get that message to check to make sure they're actually trying to run the help command. After this, I want to check to see if they ran the help command. So we're just going to create an if statement. We'll just say if message is equal to explanation point help or whatever you want your help command to be. Um, and if it is, then what we want to do is we want to notify all the staff members in our game that that player needs help. Um, now this is a little bit more complex, so just follow along carefully. What we want to do is we want to loop through every player in the game, and we want to see if the rank in a group is above our minimum rank. Um, and if they are, we need to fire a remote event to their client to tell them to make that little notification on the side of the screen. Um, so to start doing this, I'm just going to create a remote event under replicated storage. Um, and I'm just going to name this help notifier event, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Uh, and all we're going to do in here, we want to loop through the players, as I said. So we're going to say for index. So this is going to increment every single time our for loop goes through. Uh, and now we want to say staff member because that's going to be the player that we're actually looking at in the loop. Uh, now we're going to do something called iPairs, so in iPairs, and now we need to get all of the players that are in our game. Um, and the way we do that is by calling the getPlayers method of game.players. So we'll say game.players, colon getPlayers, which returns all of the players in our game. Uh, and then for each of these players, what we want to do is we want to check to see is the rank in our group ID above that lowest staff rank. So we'll say if staff member. Uh, and the way we check ranks in Roblox is by saying get rank in group. So we'll say get rank in group. Uh, and all we want to do here is pass in our group ID, which we specified up top. Uh, and we just want to say if that rank, if whatever that function returns is greater than or equal to our lowest staff rank. So if they're at rank 254 or they're above it, then we need to fire the remote event. So we'll just say game.replicated storage dot help notifier event and then we're going to fire the client we'll call the fire client method uh, and we want to fire the staff member we want to tell the staff members client to you know show a notification uh, and we want to tell them what player actually needed help uh, because as you saw you're able to click that teleport button um, and it also said the player's name so it's important that we send that data over the client so we're just going to pass in the player so whichever player actually asked for help after this, what I want to do is create a new local script under starter GUI. Um, and I'm just going to name the script help notifier. But once again, you can name it anything you'd like. 
Um, and what this script is going to do, it's actually going to catch in to when this remote event is fired. So we're firing it in here, um, but as of right now, if the player runs the command, it's not actually going to do anything. So we need to hook up some code to this remote event. So the first thing I'm going to do inside of our local script, like I always do, is get a reference to our local player. So I'll say local player equals game.players.localPlayer. Uh, and after this, I want to get whenever that remote event is fired. So we'll say game.replicatedStorage.HelpNotifierEvent. And then we're going to hook into the onClientEvent event of this remote event. Uh, and we're going to connect it to a function. And then in here, all I want to do is I want to grab the player. So we're just going to say in here, player needing help. So after this, what we're going to want to do is create something called a bindable function. Now, many of you probably don't know what a bindable function is. I haven't heard of it, um, at least up until yesterday when I was creating this video. Um, but a bindable function is very simple. It behaves just like a normal function, um, except we can actually use it to create buttons on the side for our notification. So whenever the button is clicked, we can fire a bindable function um, and that'll actually run the code inside. Um, and I don't know why Roblox doesn't just use a regular function, but this is the way we have to do it for our little notification. Um, so we're just gonna create a bindable function. So the way we do that is we're gonna say local teleport player, which is gonna be the name of our function. And we're gonna set that equal to a new bindable function. And we'll just create that by using instance.new. Um, and after this, what we want to do is actually run code when this function is called. And the way we do this, again, is a little bit different because it's that bindable function. We'll just say teleport player dot on invoke. So this is kind of like connecting a function. Uh, and we're just going to set that equal to a new function. Um, and inside of here, we're saying, what do we want to do when the teleport player function is called? And what we want to do is we want to teleport the staff member to the player that needs assistance. So we're just going to say player.character, which is the staff member. Uh, and we want to set the primary part C frame to the primary part C frame of the player that needs help. So we're just going to say player needing help dot character colon get primary part C frame. So this is just going to set those C frames equal and it's going to teleport the staff member to the player that needs help um, so that they can further assist them. After this, we have our teleport player function all set up. Now what we have to do is actually send the notification to the staff member. Um, and the way we do this is by saying game.startergui. Um, and this is a little bit differently than some other things that we do on Roblox. We call the set core method of starter GUI and we're saying what core do we want to set? Well, we want to set send notification. Um, and then in here, our second argument, we pass in an array of a bunch of different properties that have to do with our notification. So things like title, text, duration, even the buttons and the functions that get called when the button is pressed, all these things we pass in in this little array right here. Um, so I'll start by saying title because I want the title to be equal to player needs help. We need to give a clear indicator of why they're getting a notification. Uh, the text of this notification I want to say player needing help dot name. I want to tell them what the name of the player that needs help is. Um, and then I want to tell them that that player is in need of assistance. So maybe if it was me, you know, saying running the help command, it would say scripted Wyatt is in need of assistance. If it was my friend, it would say, you know, my friend is in need of assistance. Whoever that player is that ran the command, it's going to put their name and then we're going to add on to that is in need of assistance. After this, something else we can add, it's an optional argument, um, but I think it's probably something you want to specify, is the notification duration. So that means however long we want the notification to stay on the screen after it came up. Uh, so I think 15 seconds is a pretty good amount of time, but you could change this to whatever you'd like um, so that your staff members have enough time to react to the notification and teleport to the player. After this, we have two more things we want to put inside of this array. Uh, the first thing is what we want our button to say. So we have to say button one and the text that we want to be displayed on the button. So I want the text teleport to be displayed. Um, and then the one more thing is we need to specify our callback function. And all that means is whenever that button's clicked, it's going to run some code. Um, and it's actually going to run our bindable function. So we're going to say callback and we're going to set that equal to teleport player. So whenever they click the button, it's going to run this callback function. So it's going to run teleport player um, and the staff member is going to get teleported to the player that needs help. 
Um, and that's actually all we have to do for the script. We can go into the game real quick to test it out. So all we have to do is run the command in chat, explanation point help. Um, and of course, because I am myself, if I click teleport, it's not going to do anything. Uh, but if you had two players in this game, you know, a player that needs help and a staff member, the player runs the command, and then whenever the staff member clicks that teleport button, it'll bring him right over to the player. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the paste and link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.